All right. Hey, everyone. I'm Polly. I'm so excited about today is because it's the first day of several different um, classes on color grading. Uh, I know a lot of folks have been asking for this. And so this is the first one to kick it off with Andre, who has done two sessions for us already um, about how to use Photoshop and Lightroom, specifically Lightroom, especially we did a deep dive on that. As Andre is a Lightroom ambassador and a former Adobe Creative resident. Um, and so Andre, thank you so much again for lending your expertise. Please do a quick intro about yourself. Um, for photographers, please also feel free to drop in the chat where you're coming from, your information in the chat, connect with each other as we do this class. Um, because I know this is open to everybody, not just specifically BWP members. So feel free to drop your information in the chat. Oh, that's and ours. I'll drop, I'll drop Andre's. Uh, and yeah, please meet yourself too. <laughs> um, I'll drop Andre's information, especially his Discord channel, which he'll discuss in a little bit. Um, Andre, go ahead. Hey. Um, so yeah, let's actually take the first five minutes. Let's take a deep breath. <sighs> Let's set our intention today. Um, so I am not. Um, I'm not showing you anything that, or what I'm showing you should be continue to highlight your creative vision. Um, you are worthy of work, of jobs, um, and as you continue to work, um, I pray that the right folks will not only see your work, um, but give you the proper budget so that you can um, make the things you need to. Um, for the folks that are putting your ads in the chat. Remember that Zoom doesn't populate links properly, so write the whole HTML, the whole URL, so HTTPS colon backslash backslash www.instagram.com or twitter.com or Tumblr or whatever dot com slash your app. That way folks can click to it easily. Um, yeah, what I would just say is like here, let me show you. Yep. Yep, Bree Mitchell you got it, all right. You got it. But yeah, so um, today we're gonna, we, we've talked about Lightroom a bunch um, and today we're only gonna focus on um, color grading. Um, we're gonna touch on color mix, but the color grading in my mind is a really fancy way to talk about how you um, can be really intentional with the colors that you choose for your work. So, you know, before we get into that, I was hoping that folks could take a minute and write in um, if there are any specific questions you have or things you're hoping to learn. Um, I have things that I want to go over, but um, since this is our third one, Polly and I have definitely noticed that folks really love um, not only getting their questions answered, but feeling like those getting those little lights turned on. There's a lot of moments often, especially in the Adobe Creative Suite, or really in creativity in general, where sometimes it just takes someone looking you in the eye and saying, like, you have it, you're almost there, here's the last thing that you need. Um, so if you could take maybe till 2.10, just to think of some potential questions, you can obviously ask them throughout, um, but just to you know frame how we're going to start, and um, I will introduce myself. So my name is Andre LaRoe. I'm a Brooklyn-based visual artist. Um, I should do this. I always forget to share what I'm doing. Um, broken based visual artists. Um, I do some editorial work, uh, some commercial work, do a lot of different things. My work kind of sits in a couple of different planes. I also, I say visual artist, but I also direct. Um, so if you head over to my feed, you'll see yesterday, I um, finally got to show this work I did last year with the New York Times for this painter, Jordan Castile, who's amazing. Um, and then like directing wise, like end of last year, last thing I did was, um, there's stuff from this year, but I, I forgot to post it was this <clears throat> holiday video I did with Logitech that talked about, you know, what it was like to be around our loved ones again um, in a safe way. And so, you know, one of the reasons why Polly asked me to come is uh, because I tweet about her all the time, but also because um, I think I remember when she first pitched this idea to me, I was so excited and to see how it's grown in the pandemic to see this like international organization of um, black femme, black female, black female presenting photographers, um, be able to go in and photograph festivals and all these things, it's so, so cool. Um, and so I just wanted to lend a little bit of my voice and work 
um, to hopefully help you further see how helpful and, um, and how great your work can be and already is. So um, that is my work. If you want to follow me, you can find me here. If you're a Twitter person, because you like to talk brazy, you can also find me there. My name is pretty easy because there's a U in it. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we're going to talk about Lightroom. Um, so questions that I have, how do I get tones to be similar throughout my picture sets? Um, we have talked about color grading when it comes to changing a color image to black and white. Okay, that's pretty simple. We can do that. Um, I'd like to know more about exporting color theory resources because I follow the vibes one. Okay. Follow the vibes is very accurate. Um, I would like to know what the best way to color grade black skin is about changing it too much. Curious about keeping things picture to picture. So um, is there a way to make record changes in Photoshop? Also, yes, I actually haven't done that in a while. So let's start with that actually. Let's start with something that we were not, <laughs> I was not planning on because I want y'all to know that um, y'all are the ones in charge, not uh, not me and my silliness. So I'm gonna make sure that my do not disturb is on. If you have a Mac, please do it. Um, because you know you don't want whomever texting you like, "Where's my money?" You're trying to present. Not that I want anybody any money, but you know. Um, all right, so give me one second. I'm gonna open up Photoshop. So, um, you know, in the Adobe Creative Suite, um, everything works together. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm using this, is not out of my vanity. It's just sometimes it's easier to use a photo of myself. So I'm not you know, putting other people out, out in the world. This is a project I did with Camelback, the water bottle company, um, and that'll be out soon. It wasn't for me. I just, you know, got a little photo while we were out there. So um, let's say we want to edit this photo. If you just right click on the image, you can see. I was hoping I could do it. Let me zoom in. I don't think it's going to do that. You can um, hit edit in Photoshop. And since the Creative Suite works together, it's easy to move between the edits. And after you're done in Photoshop, you can go right back to Lightroom. So the question about can you record edits the same in Photoshop and Lightroom? Not exactly, but you can um, make actions. Um, so what I mean by that is here over there's this thing called the history panel. I know this is kind of small. So I'm like, see, it's like giving me, I can't really, is this it maybe? Hoping I could, there's a smart zoom. I honestly cannot for the life of me remember what it is. Um, oh, there it is. Okay. So y'all see this right here? Polly, can you just say yes or no? Yes. Okay, cool. Great, I finally, it's like, it's, anyway, so right here, there's history, right? So as you make edits, like, let's just make some like random edits really quick. We'll go to adjustment layers. Uh, let's like do something crazy here. Let's go back to adjustments. Let's put it in black and white. Uh, let's go back to adjustments. Let's add a gradient to it. That is, That's really aggressive, but okay, right? So if we go back over here, you'll see that you can see all the things I did and go back step by step because um, it records everything. Um, and you can change how often um, or how many steps it records. But if you do that, just remember that your computer generally won't be able to, um, like it'll run slower if you keep all this in your like random, in your RAM. So just be careful. But while you're here, let's say that we wanted to do an edit like that, but we want to do it again. Like, how do we do it? Okay. So what I want to do is I want to go up. Where are you? I want to go to window and I'm going to, go to actions. So actions is this like kind of amazing thing because it, it just records what you did like you were a computer. So let's just Let's uh, let's run vignette and hit play. Um, essentially, what you're trying to do is you can record an action. Like these are all the buttons that you'd get if you were like had a CD player. Like maybe 
okay so for example you see all of a sudden now there's all these layers in here um these all were all layers that were made with an action i had called mixer brush cloning so it's for something that isn't for this so it's not really a good example but we can just go back to our history go back to the first image <clears throat> who cares but if we go to our actions and we hit record see how this red uh dot just came up in photoshop now i can do you know normal stuff let's do a normal edit instead of me like going unnecessary so first um <clears throat> i'm gonna go to my curves bring my highlights up a little bring my shadows up just a little bit um then i'm going to um let's see change my hue and saturation a little bit make it a little bit a little bit more desaturated um one second it's funny because I don't use Photoshop as much anymore, so it's like hard to remember where everything is. I'm going to add a photo filter so it's a little bit warmer. That's a little too orange, so let's pick the color like a little bit closer to here. And now we're going to hit stop. And now you're going to see all of the layers, everything I made is recorded right here. Make adjustment layer, default without colorize make adjustment layer curves. And so if I run the same action again, now it's going to look a little different. So let's just hit play. It's going to look a little different than it did before. There's still this like white thing over it. Not a great, not a great example, but what you essentially want to do on in Photoshop is you want to make an action. Um, you want to record one edit and then you want to run that action on your photos. I would tell you that Lightroom is better for this, but if for whatever reason you only want to use Photoshop, um, I go back to actions. Let's do new action. We're going to call this BWP um, example one. I'm going to put this in a folder called default actions. Now immediately record is on. So um, I'm going to change my color balance a little bit. Give it like some interesting tones. Um, then I'm going to bring up my highlights again. Actually, make my shadows a little bit darker this time. Get some contrast going. Um, then let's just make our vibrance a little bit, a little bit brighter. And then we'll go over to exposure and brighten that up. So <clears throat> if we hit stop now, we now have an action right here called BWP example one. So if I hit play. You'll see that it will. <laughs> this was actually very silly. I should have started from the original image. Um, if you hit play from the original image, we'll get back to the edit we had, and it's saved here. So now what we can do is we can go to File. If you want to batch edit in Photoshop, I'm not sure why you would do that, but you can. Um, you can go to Automate, Batch, or Scripts Image Processor. Um, they kind of do similar things. But what you can do is you can default action BWP example one, and then you go to source where the images are. Um, let me just find something that I have on my computer right now. What is this? Uh, okay. So we have these images that are in here. We can choose these, and then we can do include subfolders, destination. I'm gonna put it in a new folder. So we'll choose that, and we'll do. Uh, BWP example one. And then now, um, maybe we can change the document, the name to extension, let's say dash zero one. So it's a little bit easier to stay organized. And we hit OK. And now, what it's trying to do is make um, a PSD file. I don't necessarily want to do that, but for this sake, we'll just we'll see it but so you're seeing how like this edit looks crazy it's because i had a previously edited image and now it's running that same action and so technically all these images will be edited in the same way the way isn't good because they're already edited but what you're doing is when you make an action yeah when you make an action you sh um it's going to follow the same thing throughout it's like copy paste in lightroom so in photoshop if you record an action um 
for example, I used to use this when I was in college and I would take graduation photos. I would record an action based on this, the like same four places I'd photograph in, whether it was morning and for evening. And that way I'd run the action for each batch of images so they look the same. And now that I showed you all that and you were like, yikes, that was a lot of things. Um, we're gonna quit Photoshop. We're not gonna save this. We're not gonna save this. And we're gonna go back to Lightroom and we're gonna see how we can just take this image, do the same thing and be much happier with it um, here in Lightroom. So, <clears throat> so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna bring my exposure up a little bit, contrast down a little bit, highlights down, shadows up. Bring my curve down a little bit. Um, and then now we have an image that's a little bit, it's edited a little bit. In this bottom right corner in uh, Lightroom, something that's really cool is if you hold this, you can see the original photo and then the new edit. And if you like this, you can save it as a preset, like an action, or if you know this is the only time we're gonna edit it, if you just hit Command C, you see how right here, this showed up, see this thing that just says copy edit settings. Now I can go and select all the photos of me that are right here. And then I can hit Command V and it says paste edit settings. And now every single image has the same edit throughout. And since the light is the same, they all look how I want them to look. Um, what you can do is like, I would tell you to never ever copy like a crop or how you rotate an image because those will change, but it's important like you can copy your exposure and copy that stuff to make sure that your colors um, look how you want them to look. So I'm gonna get into the color grading now, but I just wanted to show y'all that it's actually very simple. Um, oh, there's a bunch of questions. Sorry. No, you're good. So JP said, oh, sorry. Uh, less, uh, JP said it looks like camera raw. Yeah, Lightroom is just camera raw and bridge like had a baby, right? It is the organizational powers of Adobe Bridge with the editing powers of Lightroom Raw. Um, there was one question um, relating to this before you switch to the color grading portion. Um, it was, I forgot from who, but it was asking if, um, is this just recording for your own internal recording or does this get recorded for like social? Uh, let me see if I can find the original. Is, yeah, is this actual recording like for playback or for social media or just to know what you did? And I think you answered it. Um, but I'm Oh, so the recording is not for social. The recording, so what you're doing when you're making an action is it's similar to a preset, right? Um, <clears throat> let's say you find an edit that you like. You can record it as an action, save it. And then if you want to go back to uh, BWP Summer Beach, um, you can run that edit every time that you like, um, if you think that, the, that you want that, that look. Um, one way to make uh, an action or a preset more um, applicable to multiple things is actually not use exposure, not use cropping, just change the colors. Because sometimes you might go and photograph the beach and it might be really bright. And another time you might go and it might be darker in the day. And exposure is something that you kind of want to change, change locally, but colors are what's going to set you and the mood of your images apart. Does that make sense? How can you uh, ask that how you edit for social the way Lightroom shows you your work was wondering if Photoshop has something similar. Edit for social. Yeah. I need you to clarify. Hey, I'm just yeah, gonna go talk. Ahead. Hey, Andre, thanks for answering the question. Um, just in Lightroom, there's a part where you can export what you did and then everyone can see the work that you did. Like, I forgot what it was called, but it's something newer that Lightroom had. Yeah, like and right here, you can do, oh, sorry, I'm not even screen sharing. One second, <laughs> let me make sure we're on the same page. Yeah. So yeah, you can um, you can share to discover. Maybe that's what you yes. mean, share edits yeah. and allow for remixes, yeah. So I was seeing if Photoshop had that same thing. As far as I know, no, but okay. I that is not, I, I'm not even sure who the Photoshop um, PM is. I wouldn't even know who to ask but I can ask and find out and get back to you. Yeah, um, that was I do not, cool they did, yeah. but yeah, thank you. No, totally, absolutely. So consistent styles, um, we're gonna get into this. These are some photos I just took for my friends, um, bird watching brand. 
um, here in Brooklyn at Prospect Park. Um, we did it in the morning. If you look at the before and after, like even throughout the images kind of feel like they're supposed to be together. Um, and e-com can be tricky because, you know, everybody, everything needs to, the product needs to look good and needs to feel natural. Um, but the, my main problem, Polly, is like, oh, wait, can I see it? Oh, there we go. I couldn't, I couldn't screen share and see the chat, but let me make the chat like way bigger on this other screen so it's easier for me to read it. Um, so Mandy, that, and if I'm saying your name incorrectly, let me know. Um, no, that's right. <laughs> okay. Mandy, uh, that makes sense. I was confused. I thought you were asking me um, if I was recording the action for people to watch on social. And I was like, no, but I understand now what you're asking. So my apologies. Okay, so um, let me show you the tools and then we'll talk about this. Cause some of, you, some of the questions are about like colors and stuff. Okay, so in here, um, in this image, or actually let's pick an unedited image. Um, in Lightroom, we pick now. So let's pick a photo that we like, something simple like this, right? I photographed all of these in RAW, um, and I know that most of you know what it is, but I'll just explain. So Camera Raw is the like the digital negative, um, JPEG is the print. So RAW files are always very, very large. And JPEG's a little bit smaller. So when you're doing a job, if you have the ability to store images um, or if your hard drive is big enough or you have externals, I would tell you to photograph the raw so you have more ability to um, color grade and make more decisions throughout. So like what I mean by color grade, I'm just gonna kind of make a quick edit for you. Let's bring our highlights down, bring our exposure down a little bit, lights down. Um, and then let's do something fun. Let's change this green so it's kind of, that's too much. A little bit warmer. Um, and then let's go down to our color grade. Add a little bit, make it a little bit bluer, like it's kind of a sad day. And then give me a slight pick up here. And then my highlights, I can just kind of double down this way. So this is a quick edit, feels like vaguely filmic. Um, but what I mean by color grade is that I'm making a decision about what mood this image has. The decision can be set when you um, when you photo scout, when you photograph, but your editing is like the finishing touch. And so I know someone asked earlier, how do we decide what colors go well together? It really kind of depends on your personal style. Some folks will, let me find this. Some folks will warm everything and like their style is a little bit, it's like, it's, so some folks will do this like very warm look, some folks do a cool look, some folks mix them. It really depends on what you think looks nice. Um, one thing I can tell you is a great way to start if you're unsure is over in this top left corner in Lightroom, there's learn and discover. So we're just gonna go to learn really quick. Um, and I'm actually gonna go over to my edits cause I don't wanna, speak on other folks work. But like here, even this photo, my friend, Navy, if you look at the original image, this is the original and you go forward, like I just made my blues a little bit brighter um, and I made sure that I didn't like blow out of skin. But on the left, it shows you every step that I made, specifically the color mix and the color grading. Um, <clears throat> and that's important because it's how you get from this to this, you know? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. We'll absolutely zoom in more. I know it's, this is like so, because it's such a large application, it's hard to no, no worries. appropriately. But if you see like over here, you can see that I changed all of these colors. Um, and we're going to get into what these numbers mean and why I did them. But color grading really like it's, a very fancy word for saying like, how do you establish your mood? So here's a great example. Look at this image I took of Fabiola for, um, oh man, I can't forget the magazine, but this is the the final photo, very green, um, dark to really appreciate the, the vastness of this room. And then here's the original, right? And so 
it takes a long time, just like with photographing to establish your style, but there are some things that you can definitely lean on. So once again, with this image, if you come in, um, you can see, since it's two screens, it always acts funny. Hold on one second, y'all. Um, you can see that it, I'm looking at the learn or discover, I can even click to the portion and see, oh, like what changed in this image from yellow to green? Maybe not a lot, but if we go from green to purple, you'll see like each step continues to change the image from this original. Um, and it looks fine, but I wanted something that would work well with these like really beautiful mansion. Um, and so to get that, I ended up with this like kind of green haze and I added green at the end to make it feel, um, to make it feel like it was kind of commit, like commiserate with this person. Like um, Fabiola is a really talented paper artist. So I wanted this stuff not to feel like it was a photo from yesterday, but a photo that could be from the last, you know, 30 years or so. And that's how I ended on this grainy section. So we're gonna um, get back to these bird collective photos and work through an edit, but I just wanted to show what I meant. Um, I see your questions, but I'm gonna try to go through these um, now and then get to them soon. Um, so we're not gonna worry about exposure, contrast, anything like that. We're focusing mainly on this entire color panel. This is where you make all of your decisions as a color artist. Um, I would say that folks always you know, viewers, laymen are excited about photos are a little bit warmer, uh, but that's something you need to always follow that. Um, for me in this image, my primary color that's dominant is this green, right? And so you saw in this last one, we ended up making the green a little bit warmer. How do I do that? How did I do that? So we're gonna reset all these little curves and we're gonna go step by step. Okay, so First in the color panel, there is temperature. Um, temperature and tint, those two things are trying to establish what the white is in the image. You use this like little eyedropper tool to slide over and pick what's supposed to be white. So um, let's see, this little portion is white. Um, but you notice that as I do that, it's gonna make this image much warmer because it's trying to make whatever you say is white be true white. So as a result, this is a little bit off. I don't love that. So I'm gonna reset it. Just kind of get it, getting it back to the original. Um, I like this photo. Let's work on it from there. All this zooming is really throwing me off. Sorry, y'all. All right. So these are white balance sliders. You can obviously change them to make things warmer or cooler um, or more pink or more green. I don't really play with these that often. As long as my white balance is set properly, um, on my, when I take it on my camera, I try my best not to say, let me warm it up by adding temperature. Um, instead, I'd prefer to do that in the, in the curve or, excuse me, down here um, in color mix or color grade. So uh, vibrance and saturation are very similar tools, but I would say that saturation is the hammer and vibrance is a little bit more uh, refined as a tool. Saturation makes everything more saturated. Like everything. Look at his skin. Like nobody's skin looks as red. And obviously desaturated is going to be black and white. Um, so I don't use this as much, but vibrance is really cool because it's a smart tool that says, what are the more muted colors in this and how can I bring them up? So if you look, even if you go, like look at 100 from saturation, you can see this like really red, all the red tones in his face are pulled out. If you go to 100 from, vi from vibrance, you don't actually see that. You see the image is understanding that they're the greens and the blues are a little bit um, muted. So I would always say like, you know, come bring your vibrance up a little bit, um, but I leave saturation alone generally. Um, getting down in here is actually really, really cool. So we're actually gonna um, talk about color mix first. So color mix is this really amazing tool because it operates um, in two ways. First, it has base colors. So it has, Magenta, purple, blue, cyan, green, yellow, orange, and red. And then inside of those sliders, there's hue, saturation, and luminance. Luminance is how bright the color is. It's kind of, uh, the best way to describe it is like, this is a very deep blue that I have on, but like this, these blues are similar, 
Um, but this blue, part of it is it's more um, saturated. It's, it's more, has more luminance than the shirt does. And so luminance is like how bright the color, the, that color itself is. Saturation is how deep the color is. Um, hue, we're, it, it'll be make more sense when you see it on the, the color, color grading curve. But hue is like where it sits on the color wheel. For red, for red, if you go this way, red gets more magenta. And if you go this way, it gets more uh, yellow. The main colors that impact skin tone, in my opinion, are red, orange, and yellow, particularly red and orange. So if you are color grading with those, always be careful to check how someone's skin looks when you're done, because you could end up making a lovely edit that has the background looking exactly like you want, but it could have the person looking crazy, which is not ideal. So that is that is the HSL. I'm gonna show you how I use it in a minute, but I wanted to get down to color grading because it'll kind of have some more clarity. In color grading, you have the ability to select any color, right? This center is white. As you get further away from the center, so like let's pick maybe here, the closer to the center you are, the less saturated the color is, the further away you get, the deeper the color gets, right? So you can end up like making something pretty like intense looking, like I don't know if you if you were into that and you wanted to make something like really wild, totally fine. But most of your color grading will happen in this like 10, 15% region where you're adding this very really soft color tint to your midtones, your shadows, and your highlights. I know you know what this is, but let me just explain it in a way like can you know? So a shadow, if you're looking at me, would be my hoodie or it would be like this 35 millimeter lens. Um, a highlight would be like this AirPods case or um, like this notebook, like just the, the, the whitest, brightest parts of the image. And then midtones are everything else. So in this image, um, you'll see that you could easily assume um, that these, these up here are highlights. But also, if you look up close, like right here on his head, the white in his bandana, um, those are all highlights. And then his hair, these pants are shadows. So any change that you make to midtones is going to impact the whole image, versus shadows and highlights are kind of like little cherries on top. So let's say that this is something that you want to photograph, you want, want it to feel a little more like fall. So one thing you can do with color grade that I like is you can start to grab this outside circle and position the color. I want something a little bit warmer around orange, right? Then I can start to pull my line. And you'll see as I pull, you see how the hue is changing. So the hue is letting me know like where it is in this 360 degree thing. The saturation will increase, the decrease as I get closer to the center. Oops, sorry. And then as I get further, you see how it's just continuing to go up and up and up and up. So the saturation are the, is the edges. And then the luminance, you'll see that L doesn't change at all. You can change the luminance of the color here. So. We have something that's nice and like a little bit warm, a little bit more fall. And you can even see this before and after real quick, just to start feeling nice and warm, subtle shift. Um, JP says, you suggest setting your midtones first and then adjusting highlights and shadows, it doesn't matter. I think it really depends on what you're trying to do. If you have an image that's super dark, like whatever your most dominant part of the, of the light spectrum is, that's the one you want to set first because then you can work from that. Um, sometimes what you could do is you could have a beautiful silhouette and you could leave the shadows completely black and then make the highlights like a touch blue or green. Like it really is like a, a play, like a plug and play thing. Like you have to figure out what looks good to you. Um, but for me, I know that this subtle orange is light is nice. Now, if I wanted to make it look a little cross processed, a little bit more filmic, let's take this blue for our shadow and now you also have this little haze that came in you see that that little subtle difference now your shadow if you look at it again i added in this soft blue and you see how it's just showing up a little bit on his face um i don't love this because maybe it looks a little he looks a little dead so i'm actually gonna um I'm actually going to switch this and go a little bit of a warmer shadow. And then lastly, maybe we try for a bluer highlight. 
because that'll impact what's behind me, particularly the sky. So it still gives me this like cross process look um, that people like without being without being like too overpowering. This photo feels like a sad New England rainy day. Um, and that's kind of cool to get from here, oh, from here to here in a couple steps. I personally wouldn't keep this edit the same. I would actually turn my highlights off, leave this warm. Um, I would, because you've always roast me like, well, why would you make the edit like that? I'm like, it's just for example. I would um, bring my dehaze down, bring my texture up. And then I have an image that I feel good about. Um, let me bring my contrast down a little bit. But yeah, I, I generally like this image. I think it looks really nice for his skin. Uh, the background has a little bit more pop to it, um, but your color grade starts with a decision of like, what is the mood of this image, right? Um, just so for example's sake, we're gonna copy again. So once again, remember just command C, you can see that it shows up down here where it says um, copy edit settings. Let's go to this photo, let's paste. And now you're always seeing, um, now you're seeing, okay, wow, like this has good mood, but I've possibly made his face look like far dark. And how do I know if you go, go back and forth, you'll see this before and this after. This image shouldn't be as moody or if anything, I'm overpowering his face. So if we keep it the same, one thing we can do is we can go to masks. Um, we can hit select subject, it takes a second. And now he's cut out um, and I can make some adjustments to him. Um, so I'm just gonna make him a little bit brighter. So it looks closer to what he looked like before. Turn a mask off and now let's look at our before and after. Now I'm only really changing the background. It's a little bit richer. It feels like a fall day. The colors are kind of deep. Maybe the green's a little bit strong. So how do we fix that? We go down to our color mix. Um, color mix allows you to edit a single color, change the hue of that color. So if you look at the screen behind me, you see how it gets more yellow. Let's make it a little bit more blue, but it's actually kind of an intense color. So let's bring down the saturation, like how deep the color is, and let's make it a little bit brighter. So it's less overpowering. And now you can see how this changed. And like, if you don't believe me, these little eyes, this is the one really cool thing I love about Lightroom. These little eyes that are right here allow you to see what the edit looks like with that setting or not. Instead of just hitting Control Z, you can see I made the, I made it a little bit bluer. Oh, maybe I made it too blue. So now let's bring our hue back. Let's make it actually a touch warmer and look at our before and after. Just made the made the green a little bit less overpowering so you're not competing for what the what the important part of this image is. Oh. This can you see it? Polly, let me know if you can see it. Great. So what I was saying was um, if you tap this eye little little eyeball you can see the change and you'll see that i just made this green a little bit less intense so there wasn't as many things competing for um thick and what we're looking at so i'm going to take a second now and i'm going to answer some questions because i know that this it's just a lot of information and to be frank with y'all the best way to learn it is just to keep doing stuff um okay so um oh shout out to my girl Anis. i see you in here shout out to philly you know what i'm saying do i use lightroom or lightroom classic i'm using lightroom right now um the difference between lightroom and lightroom classic is lightroom classic is a local storage based solution so you can plug in hard drives like uh one of these um and or you could just rely on the hard drives on your computer as a quick side note, please hear me say this. If this is the only thing you take away from this, make sure that your things are backed up in three places because you never know what will happen. In college, I didn't back my work up and like my whole first, I think, and second year of photo photography, which was, you know, pretty whatever, um, I don't have them anymore. So always make sure you have it in a couple of ways. So when I finish a client job, I don't take the stuff off of the memory card until I'm done. Uh, for some of you, that's not realistic because you don't have enough memory cards. But for me, I have a million of them. Um, and so I keep memory cards and then I back it up onto Lightroom, which is a cloud-based service. So if I click in this top left corner or top right corner, you'll see it's a sync back and synced up. Like almost all work is on here. So like six terabytes of photos, which seems like a lot. It's not, or it is, but it's not. Um, 
then I also have a, a RAID system. It's basically like a series of hard drives that back up on each other um, that backs the stuff up when I'm done with it. And then lastly, I usually keep the final images also in Dropbox. Um, and for certain big projects, like I'm not kidding, these are just for stuff for the last couple of months. I keep backup of all of them on these hard drives. And then after a certain period of time, I take them and leave them at my mom's house um, in my, just like in my room so that in case something happens, there's still a copy of it somewhere in case, I don't know, the internet goes down and, you know, I lose like a hard drive in the fire or something like that. Um, but you want to do three ways. All right. So Lightroom, uh, one plus of Lightroom is that since it's cloud-based, you get everything backed up. Lightroom Classic, um, you want to make sure that you back everything up um, in multiple ways, whether Lightroom or Lightroom Classic, make sure everything's backed up. One positive Lightroom Classic is when you need more space, you can buy it. Um, and it's just a little bit cheaper, but um, drives can fail. And please make sure that you're getting um, SSD drives and not the regular hard drives. Okay, so that was that question. Yeah, so consistent state way of editing. Um, I, I've shown you all my work. Um, one thing, that I will say about consistent editing is like, like this photo and this photo, although they look very different, still are somewhat cohesive. These are for the same client for the New York Times. Um, I'm trying to find this one photo in here. You'll see that even the use of blue feels similar here that it does here. Um, there are presets that I work with that I really love. Um, and I would advise you to try a ton of them. So if, like on that learn tool that I showed you, you can do, is ooh. we can go to my page. Here's a picture of Brie that I love. And we can edit this photo. We can go through it. And then up here it says, save as preset. So you can save an edit and it says like Adobe Live day two of two test. That was from something else I did. Um, but you can save the preset and then continue to return to it. But if you have edits that you like, depending on how you how you work, like if you know, for example, like you always love contrast and you like to play with your shadows, um, once you set an edit and like it, save it as a preset. So like after you finish making your selects, you can just hover over the preset, see which one works best, click on that, and then copy and paste it over several images. Um, you want your presets to be... Um, get back to this photo of Vic. If I want to make this into a preset, I go, I click on this edit panel up here. Oh, sorry. Up here. Then I hit preset. And then there's all these presets, like premium ones. These are ones that if you pay for Adobe to give you. Um, you can hit plus and you can write create a preset. Um, And I believe, I honestly can't remember how to do it right now, but I'm pretty sure you can, yeah, you create a preset based on what you edited here. And what I'm trying to tell y'all is um, if you go through these, you never wanna have your mask on because you're never gonna, like how you, how you mask one photo is never gonna be the same as another. Like even if it's the same photo, the subject might be in a slightly different place. Um, profile is color, so you wanna keep that. I would actually, this. If you want to take notes, this is important. I would turn off exposure um, because every image is brighter or darker. And then for color, I would turn off white balance and optics. Um, besides that, if you make a copy that you like on an image, it will copy better and paste better um, across multiple images. If you turn off your masking because that's uh, an individual local edit, your optics because that optics will be like if you crop an image or like if you zoom in or rotate because that's not gonna be the same um and i also turn off white balance because once again like one image could be outside um you can take another one inside and you can still edit them using the colors that you know that you like um so that so that they look like they're all together does that make sense please feel free to um to tell me and paul if you have any thoughts um i'm gonna answer Mandy's how do you color grade from black and white to color okay. there's a couple ways to do that but I'm going to give you all just a second to see if there's a question you have and I'm also going to put some lotion on my hand because apparently I've been washing too much 
Everybody okay? Uh, yes, y'all do not be shy. No question is too small or no dumb questions here. Um, and if you haven't watched our, <laughs> our sessions uh, in the past with Andre on just how to use like Lightroom, for example, um, I'll drop the link once more in the chat, the playlist where you can watch those two sessions because it also give good um, context if you're not familiar with Lightroom. Um, for this particular session. Uh, I see a comment. Okay, Karen. Has... Yeah, that's a, uh, yikes. Yeah, I don't know about y'all, but my dryness will always show up in the, like my knuckles. <laughs> and I guess I've just been washing this one hand too much. There's like, that is scary. Okay, so um, color dropper. I don't know. Okay, so the eyedropper tool is just like, I need a, I need a better example than like an outdoor photo. So let me pull one for y'all. No, I don't want to do that. Let's go. I have a question. Um, Go for how it. do you approach, you know, just color grading on black skin tones compared to other skin tones? If there's a different way you approach that, great. Um, all right, so let me just answer this color drop tool. Okay, so here's some photos of this woman um, that I photographed a couple of years ago for this company Feather. So this is her outside, random photo, whatever. This is her inside. Um, We'll go with this one. Um, if there's competing light sources, your phone um, or your camera or whatever you're photographing with is trying to decide what true white is. And so if you go over under color and oh, actually I'm gonna hover and let it show you. This allows you to select the white balance. So if I say that this is white, it's gonna make everything bluer. If I say that this is white, it's gonna make everything super blue. Um, this tool, the goal of it is to help you figure out or help help the editing software figure out what white is. Um, so that is the eyedropper that I know of. What y'all might be thinking about is over here, there's a tool called Target Adjustment Color Mix. So let's say I didn't know what color this was, right? So I can tap this call, this little like target thing. And then I can come over and select this, like her knee. And then from there, I could do like something like this, where I can change what this tone of color is. I don't know if y'all are seeing, this is actually like kind of incredible. I try not to show people this on calls because it's really confusing, but changing the hue of it, you see how the hue is going from, since it's a cyan, it's between blue and purple. So going in both directions, you can make like a specific color edit, but obviously you're not just editing this thing. Anything that that's, that is that color, like this over here, is going to be altered. So if I went and did that with this green, see how all the green is changing? So like if I wanted to do like a more Urban Outfitters, like warm photo shoot, um, I can change this green, the hue and the saturation on the color mix tool. So once again, the color mix allows you to edit specific colors. The color grading tool allows you to change the entire look of the edit like the entire image. So let's say that we love how warm these plants look. So we wanna make the whole thing warm. What do we do? So now we go down to color grading. Um, I know we talked about midtones, but this is a very bright image. So we might actually wanna make our highlights kind of warm. So you see, I just added this yellow in and I'm gonna show you, I'm showing you wide so you can see this image and then I'm gonna show you tight so you can see what I did. So here I went to highlights. Um, this is center white. Instead of going to orange, I went a little bit yellow and I didn't go that far. I just made it a little bit, <clears throat> a little like a little saturated. So now you can see, let's see. Now you can see the before and the after. There's just a little touch of warmth that I got added in. And now that warmth that I added in the color grading 
matches the fact that I made this green warmer. Like throughout, it just has a different feel. When you look at this, you might think it's more summer, although it's indoors. You're starting to get this like really specific, almost like, um, like Arizona look um, that folks might like. Now you can obviously make this wilder. So like if we want to make it wilder, let's take our midtones and make those super warm also. Right, and then this this is even more of a decision to go in that direction. So what did I do? I'm gonna show you again over here on midtones. I, I mimicked what I did for highlights. Um, and one kind of cool trick about the color grading tool, let's say we wanna know we, we wanna do green, right? But we don't know which green, so you can click around. It's actually more efficient for you if you like select green and then you grab the circle on the outside. And if you rotate slowly, you can be really precise about the hue that you pick. Um, you can go like literally like incrementally and set up when you're clicking around, it can be hard to get that level of accuracy because if you're in the circle, um, it'll always assume that you're trying to move it laterally this way. Um, and so I actually like to select colors on the outside and then select the intensity from there. And remember the further you get from the center, the closer you get to the edge, the more saturated, the closer to the center, the less saturated. And you can see it because you see this that, that S number changing. So now we have this photo that feels super warm. I'm not sure that I would leave this as a final. Maybe I, I would make my, I would increase my luminance. So you, if you saw that, look at her skin again. If I change my luminance by midtones, look at how midtones is like where everything is. So her skin's in there. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit less saturated. Um, and then, you know, you could leave with this. This is a, a very nice way to edit, like where you make your highlights and midtones a uh, similar tint of color. But if you wanted to give it some like color depth, um, you could in your shadow change and do something like very opposite, very blue, very green. And now you have this thing that maybe looks, has a distinct look. I'm not saying I like it, um, but if you wanted to try depth, you could do that. I'm not gonna do it. Um, to try to explain that there's a couple ways that folks like to edit, right? Um, some of them are all rooted in uh, film stock that we've used before, but um, you can choose to use complementary colors. So like on this image, what we could do is we could keep our midtones a reasonable color because it's our primary thing that we're going to see. Um, inclusive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we could do comp like colors that um, it's not complementary forgetting what the word is right now um but i'll pull it up in a second when i turn my screen sharing off but i could do red to yellow and then make my shadows actually orange um and like do this kind of trifecta of warmth and it's a little bit aggressive but it feels warm throughout so one way to do it is kind of stack your analogous there we go thank you destiny Analogous. That's exactly what I was looking for. I was like, man, I forgot these these things. Um, this is still a little bit of intense edit for me, so I would bring my this contrast down and my exposure up just a little bit, and my shadows up and my highlights down, just to make sure that like I'm still seeing her face. But if you want something that's this bright, there's some issues with this image, like the fact that it's so blown out over here. But this analogous color style feels like you're stacking all the warm colors together. Let's look at it if we did another. Uh, another example. So let's leave Janae. Um, um, hold on. It's funny I had stuff and then actually Tyrod's a great example. Let's go with these Tyrod photos. So let's take this Tyrod image, for example. Let's say we wanted to make it cooler. We can do an analogous cool edit here. So we're down in the color grade. There's a lot of highlights, so you gotta be careful. But let's do a little bit of purple for these highlights. And you notice how as you're making it, where the purple's coming up, right? It's showing up on the wall in this jacket. And then for our shadows, do a little bit of blue here. And like, your midtones, like, I, I mean, to go back on that question that I was asked earlier, I would actually edit them first if it's the primary part of the image, because now, like, 
it actually kind of works. The color is stacked on itself. So like what I mean by stacked is like one, two, three. Um, but I would say that starting with the midtones is more ideal. And I also, this maybe isn't the best image for it, but choosing a cool um, analogous edit is an aggressive choice and it would works for certain things. So let's actually see what happens if we choose a warm. And since there's a white wall, we actually have a little bit of danger that we're in because it's going to show up so aggressively. But see like our before and after, it's a little bit warmer um, in a way that, I'm not just saying it's good, but this is a way to edit. Another way you can edit, let's choose this. There's a room that I wanted to get in. Yeah, let's, let's use uh, one of these photos. Um, sorry for the noise outside. Is you could also just color grade the same color throughout. I think it can be kind of aggressive and since this image is already so warm, you can tell it because if you look at the original image, um, there's a lot of yellow in here. Um, if you actually use the eyedropper tool to make this, you'll see it, it'll definitely make it bluer. But let's not do that. Let's not use eyedropper tool. Let's pretend we didn't know how to happen. Um, and we want to edit this photo. So first and foremost, I would use color mix. This yellow is kind of strong. Um, so I would go and bring the yellow saturation down and the orange down a little bit, um, just so it looks a little bit closer to his skin. Then I would bring my vibrance up a little so that the, these background colors can get a little bit of life, a little bit of juice. Um, next, I'm noticing how flat the white back here looks because I'm lighting him, but his back, the background's just getting fall off. Bring my highlights up a little bit. Oh, not that much. My whites. And then I'd get down into my color grade and my midtones. Like, I like how warm he looks. So I'm going to keep it kind of warm. Um, if you're not sure, you can always take your midtones and do this. Um, just kind of drag the edges and see how the color looks and be like, does that feel right? Or it's close. And so for this, red is bad. I think it's it's overpowering. But if we go something a little bit more yellow, you'll see the midtones actually look kind of nice. If you go too far, you'll see how it's overpowering. But um, I'm a big fan of the subtle edit. Um, and then it's you see, obviously, wall. the walls. I'm sorry? No, you're good. Somebody just had their mic off. Go ahead. So. But since I'm making it warmer, I actually am making, this is a great example of like how you can do colors that complement each other. So the other side on the color wheel of orange is blue. And you see that I actually chose to put my highlights in this blue that's almost exactly the opposite side. It's kind of like if you look at a lot of, oops. If you look a lot of NBA colors, like yellow and purple, um, our complements red and green, because they're on different sides of the color spectrum. Um, and you can put those together to make something kind of like relatively appealing. So if you look at the before and after, it added more contrast, a little bit more depth, but it's still not overpowering because what's going on in this image is so much warmth. So you want to be careful not to stack warmth on warmth. It might make his skin um, look too orange in a way that I don't think is good. So to kind of start to get onto the question of like, how do I edit black or, black or brown skin differently? Uh, I think the primary problem is that a lot of non-white folks will go photograph black and brown folks and not know what our skin looks like. So they might do something like, they might have their normal edit that always has like a little bit of red in the highlight and not think about how that's impacting his undertone because it's something that you may not notice as, as uh, readily um, in a black or brown person if you're not around them or you know for just laziness. And so like, let's say that this is a normal edit, like we've seen this in the Annie Leibovitz photos where like this Sloan Biles looked super desaturated and we were like, what the heck's going on? That's her normal color grade. It's like a little green um, and it's really, really desaturated. And for her, it made her skin look awful. So. For Tyrod, if this was my normal edit, I would have to be like, okay, something is wrong here. Um, and so what I would do instead is I would say, all right, what am I trying to get at here in this edit? So I'm gonna just reset. I remember Lightroom is non-destructive. So what I mean by reset is no matter what I do, I can always just double tap the circle and it'll go back to the middle. Um, so I want this photo to look like fun and kind of luxurious. 
So I'm going to up my contrast because I know that I use a flash, right? So immediately get these blacks blacker. Then I'm going to bring my exposure up a little just so it's not too, too dark. Then I'm going to bring my highlights down because I see that in his shirt, we're losing texture. Um, now we're kind of in an interesting spot because the image is bright. And then what? So I'm actually interested in if I put my midtones like a little bit blue um, because I love the idea of like him popping out of the background. Um, and then I kind of have my highlights on the warmer side. Not, not super warm, just a little bit subtle. If you look at that difference, just basically if you look, we're looking at his skin, this little pickup here, just a little bit right on his cheeks, which is getting a little bit warmer. And lastly, being careful too, but stacking my shadow so that it's similar to my highlight because I want him um, to really pop on this background. So if we look at this difference, look at how like this little tint of color kind of works out. Um, for me, I think this looks nice, but for everybody, it can be different. Um, Destiny said, why did I use contrast instead of the black slider? Um, because I wanted... I wanted contrast blacks. I don't really mess with the black sliders much, but the black slider changes the black point. So I think it's most helpful in an image if you're changing the black point, um, if you're trying to flatten the image out, um, to slide in either way. But I personally just like using contrast. They do similar things. Uh, but for me, I like that little bit of punch. Um, I think that maybe he might look a little too, just a little too orange. So I might actually go over once again to my mask um, over here. A masking tool, sorry. Create a, create a new mask, select subject, wait for uh, Adobe Sensei to do its thing. This red illuminated thing is him. And then I might just be like, oh, this is a little too dark. So I might just give him a touch of exposure and re reduce his, his sh contrast just a tiny bit. Um, and then now we have an image that I think feels like what I want. It feels like someone that's really confident, that's in a place um, that they not only feel good in, but a place that they're in charge of based on his pose. The blue um, of this couch and the yellow of this sweater work well together. Um, and I like that we went from this, which seems subtle to this. And the best way you can tell how it changes is look at the before and after um, when you uh, look at the wall to now. The wall was like a slight bit green and um, more white. And now it's just a little bit warmer. Um, everyone's aesthetic is different, but you have the ability, especially because this is e kind of easier for you to get to, um, to continue to play with this so you can express yourself. So like, for example, like I love this final edit of this image of him. It's like so bright. You see how warm this is. I chose a color grade that um, ended up being a little bit warmer so it can kind of lean into how brass this is. Um, like how brass whole scene is, how nice his skin looks. But for other people, they might lean into something that's a little bit cooler. So here, if you look into this image, you'll see that it's not only very flat, but where this light is, it's a little bit cooler. I chose a little bit of a bluer highlight um, because he's in this white room and I thought it really contrasted nicely with what we were looking at, um, not only in the elevator, but in these other warmer scenes. Um, color grading for me is like, once again, trying to reestablish what was the mood when I photographed this image and how can I maintain that? So I'm gonna uh, give some more examples, but once again, I'm gonna pause and see if there's questions that I missed. Um, give me one second. We'll get them ready to go. Okay, so let me see what I missed. If you have any questions that you haven't heard um, being answered by Andre, drop them in the chat. We have just a few more minutes um, since we are. We have all the minutes. I'm just kidding. Right. Um, Alona <laughs> said, I would like time, to know. Andre. I want to be, I want to, I want more so about exporting and color theory resources. So, Alona, I'm going to be honest. The best way that I learned this is so some people will DM you and be like, how'd you edit this? I hate when people do that. But I like really actively use my saved feature on Instagram like all of the time. So you can see like, for example, this photo, if you look, your highlights and shadows and mid tone, everything is this like deep yellow and it looks really beautiful, it looks cinematic. Um, this photo, there's just a very, very slight 
warm, um, but not in your shadows or you'd see it on the screen. So sometimes it can be, what I like to do is I'll save an image and ask myself later, like what stood out about it? What do I like about it? There's no color grade on this. If anything, there might be a little bit of um, warmth here, but you're just asking myself, like, what is it that like, it's a video of the video from Ari. This photo, the shadow, you see this cool shadow mixed with like this very kind of warm thing. Um, it, for me, it really is like, what am I seeing that I like besides the posing? And then taking um, taking time to look at what color I'm seeing and what mood is establishing. Like we all love sunset because here you can you can read this warmth, right? And you can replicate this if you're doing color grading. Um, you can warm up the image, um, increase like that orange that you get um, across their face, and then just make sure that your blues are right and it just looks awesome. This photo from Jasmine is amazing. I'm pretty sure she's in, but BWP. Um, but this photo is amazing because you have this repeating background. It's nice and brown, but there's this lovely warmth. And so across it, you're getting this like really rad um, warm midtone that like registers. And but there's nothing in the shadows because you notice these shadows are true black. There's no tinge of color. So that that's what I mean by like your color grading. So for example, like y'all don't follow Mark C. Mark C is incredible. Um, and Mark is a good example. Let me find this photo. Yes, Mark spoke to the community last year. Um, he is amazing. And that video, yeah, Marcus, our Q&A with Mark is available on YouTube as well. Do it. Watch it, read it. I'm trying to find one specific photo for y'all. And it might be in film, but the, the idea still sits. Even this, like, look at, look at this. It's warm. It's not just that this dress is here. There is the light that was used and even the grade later is like a warm orange. If you look at this um, mixed with, uh, and then take the other photo I showed you, I took a Fabiola, like using the environment around you um, to dictate how you edit is a key part of how you want to color grade. So for example, all right, let's take this photo of Chinway. This is a good example. I photographed this a while ago for the Lion Hotel, right? I'm going to make a version of this because I like this current edit. Let's say um, current edit. Um, we have to talk about versions a different time, but let's go back to our original, right? Um, we know this is at sunset. The light's not super harsh, but it does look warm on her face, right? She looks amazing. Shout out to my homie and friends in middle school, you know what I mean? Um, we want to go down our color mix and let's like lean into it being sunset, right? So we're going to take our little mid-tone slider. And we're going to make it a little bit warmer. So now immediately look at this. You see how now this warmth is added in. There are these like kind of retro purple guys going on. I need to do a better job of choosing a color that doesn't overpower her face or overpower and make her look too red. So let's slide up a little bit. So you even look at that difference. Going from yellow down to red. You see how it's, it's altering her skin? Now, what I'm saying, there's no difference. You need to be this aware with every single subject you have. Um, what I wanna do here is if I can see that this red is overpowering, you might think I need to reduce my saturation, but if you do that, you remember she's wearing red lip and she also has red on her face. So I do that, look at how it's starting to make her look lifeless, right? Instead, I wanna bring my luminance up a little bit. So it's a little bit brighter and my saturation down a little bit so that I can like have the image look as warm as I want it to. Um, but I'm not overpowering it with this. So now it's a little bit warmer, right? We're leaning into the sense a little bit more. So our before, our after. Um, highlights, I think we can leave alone. But let's see what happens if we add in an extra layer of warmth. It's a little overpowering, right? So if you're having a hard time, I'd always say like, just spend some time discovering. And I actually like what, I, what happens here when I am exploring the blues. Hold on. Uh, and then I bring my luminance up a little. Um, with this photo, like it just, it feels this a little much, but like what I mean is that, actually, no, nah, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take this, uh, this blue off, it's throwing me off. 
pull too much for me. But a color grade that like feels like the fun of the moment. There we go. That's what we want. Something that feels good, our before and our after, is a little bit warmer, a little bit brighter. Um, it doesn't always have to be this like, man, your tones are crazy. Like sometimes in your edit, what you're looking for are images, um, are edits that work with the image and other times images, edits that dominate the image. It just depends on what you're doing. So like even for this, this is a good, when we went to Alaska with North Face, right? If you look at the versions of before and after, this is one of those where having an orange midtone was really, really powerful, right? It showed the time of day. It just made it a much more dramatic, beautiful image. And other times you're trying to do an edit like with these children that I'm not even sure I'd fully color grade this. So I just brighten the kids up some. And you'll see all I did was I had my midtone just be a, just a little bit orange just because it was a summer day and it was uh, an outtake from a McDonald's shoot. So you see that that little change in orange, like if you look at their faces again, look at these lovely two, um, that little touch of orange, that just touch of warmth can help an image feel right. Uh, okay. I don't use Capture One for color grading, um, but people that use Capture One, it's it seems dope. I honestly have never used it. Um, if I'm working on set and a Digitech is using it, that's you know that's what they want to do. But yeah, I don't really do that. Um, let's see. Uh, can you take that same photo to black and white and show us what would really make it pop? Pop and is it really about lens filter used when shooting? Um, I don't use lens filters. Um, other people do. They're great. Um, and then, okay, so black and white. Okay, so let's take the same photo. There's a couple ways to make it black and white. You can straight up, actually, let's use this photo of Addis. You can just um, do a couple things. First, let's make a version. Okay. Great, let's go back to the original. You can go straight up to this corner and just hit black and white. The photos in black and white. Um, you can turn that off. You could also just desaturate the image. I wouldn't do either of those. What I would do instead um, is I would go up to profiles, which is right here below presets and go to browse all profiles. And then in there, there's something called Adobe Monochrome. Zoom into this face a little bit so you can see it while we're, while we're hanging out. Jesus, why would this be the way that it did it? Okay. We go to Adobe Color, we go to Adobe Monochrome, but you can also see that further in here, there's a bunch of black and white filters. And what they do is they determine, yeah, I might have to zoom out to show this to y'all, sorry. Um, but these filters you'll see will determine, like have different contrast levels and also like what reads as black, what reads as white, what reads like, so essentially black and white's not just making things black and white. It's saying, are the reds black or are the reds white? Are the whites black or the whites white? Um, it's just like, really making a decision. So you'll see that depending on different ones, his skin will look different. Like he looks like, if you saw this, you'd imagine he's more light skin or, you know, as it goes, as it goes throughout. But the real cool thing about it is you can then choose the amount. So like you can even bring this amount down or all the way up, like kind of shifting how the, how the image is processed by changing the amount of the profile for black and white. It's pretty, pretty cool. So that's how I would make it black and white. And then if you decide you don't like it, we'll go change our profile back to Adobe Color. We are no, none the wiser. Um, okay, uh, Ashante, um, Ashante, please. I'm sorry if I said your name incorrectly. Please remind, tell me if I did. The workflow for Lightroom and Photoshop. It. Okay. I got it. Great. Thanks. Um, so Lightroom Photoshop. Lightroom, I import my images. I keep them organized here. If you see um, over here on the left, I have my images organized month, year, day, or month, day, year. That way, as I have folders for years, um, I can just 
go by the month and the day so it's nice and organized. Um, Photoshop, you don't organize things that way. You'd organize them on your computer and then work backwards um, and just find the image and edit it. When you're in Lightroom, a lot of things you can do in Photoshop, you can do in Lightroom. And I honestly find it easier because you get edited batches. And honestly, generally how all this photograph, it's best to have, in my opinion, something that organizes the image and I can edit. And then if I need to make specific spot edits, like for example, if I wanted to like get rid of the grays he had in his beard, I could go over to Photoshop and do that. Or a lot of this stuff I could do here in Lightroom. Just real quick, if I use the healing brush, I can just go down and hold on and just get rid of these because you can make spot edits in Lightroom. So you see, I can just like get rid of these. Um, but like, let's say that this is a headshot and I wanted to, you know, lighten under his eyes or whatever. It's easier to do certain things in Photoshop, but if you look, those gray hairs are now gone. Um, you can do almost everything in Lightroom. Um, that masking tool I showed you is super helpful. Um, Natalie, yeah, I mean, whatever works for you, I'm not the person to say like, use this or don't use this. Like really, if it helps you, you should do it. Um, because what your goal is, um, is to make your process. It's like when you, so you see your camera, you're not thinking, you're not like fidgeting. You're just, you know, the shot you want, you frame it and you take the photo. That's how your editing software should be. Um, before I forget, um, I have videos on YouTube that are helpful. If you, uh, want to watch those and learn stuff. Um, my handle on Instagram is just at Andre. Um, and then also I have a Discord server where folks can come ask questions um, from other visual artists and we have giveaways uh, for the people that are there already. Um, tell, you can feel free to sing its praises and obviously YouTube, like I said, there's videos. So, okay, let me, uh, what time is it? I have no idea. 3.21, Polly, are we, are we? Oh, we're like overtime. So I thought we started at 2.30. I'm sorry, I completely forgot. Um, <laughs> I will uh, be on for like five or 10 more minutes and then we can call it, but let me, okay. Mandy said, we do the black and white. I don't use I don't use lens filters on my lenses. I just edit after the fact. I always photograph in raw and the largest file format I can. Um, Xavier said a particular way you edit black skin tones. Um, Okay, so what I'm looking for when I photograph like black and brown folks, uh, let's find a good image as an example. Okay, so here's the photo of my friend Mamadou, right? Shout out to Mamadou. This is our before, this is our after. I'm not afraid of spectral highlights. So spectral highlights are like the highlights that our skin gets um, from brightness that comes through. Um, I would say, if anything, this edit I made is a little too contrasty, but like what I'm looking for when I'm editing a black or brown person is just like, am I seeing a full range of color on their face or from a full range of light? So in this photo of Morgan, um, you're seeing the spectral highlights on her forehead because the sun is above her, um, but you're also seeing shadow, but all the way throughout you can see detail. And as long as there is detail um, in the brights and the darks, then I've effectively taken a good photo as a photographer. Um, once again, with Fola, you can see these spectral highlights here because the sun is right outside the window. Um, I'm trying to find this one photo I thought was in here. I guess it's not. But essentially, that's what I'm focusing on. It's like, did I get the full range of color and light as I edit this person's face? Because often um, what will happen is someone will take their camera, they'll take the reading, and the camera might say that like this is exposed properly because it's assuming it's trying to expose for either his beard or something else. Um, and so you just have to make sure that you take it, take it in raw, and you can get to the point where you can look at his face and say, this is a nice highlight. This is a good midtone. This is a good shadow, but this isn't good. This is good because I can see detail in his beard. Like often you're getting a photo like this and not only is it dark, but if you can't see detail in your brights and your darks, then you are not where you need to be. That's how I would describe that. Um, Paula, your question is a large, like a large point. I'm always trying to figure out from the base image. So this is my base image, right? We're looking around, we're seeing that he's a little bit warm skin tone. And so any edit that I do, I have to decide if I'm making something that's like fighting his skin tone. Um, 
like going against it to make some sort of contrast or making it complementary. So what do I mean by that? If I get down here to our color grade again, we'll go back to Greg's face, we're a little too zoomed in. Um, and then we'll go over, oh, go over here. Um, my first thought is to make a shadow for him because there's so many beautiful highlights in this image. Not something super strong, but if you look at this image, adding in some warmth isn't that bad of an idea. And so doing it through the shadows, uh, because that's how it's being written, written yeah, read, is you're seeing how all of a sudden, if I put a little warmth on these shadows across his face, the whole thing has this like warmth and joy to it. Um, versus if I did in the midtones, it would like overpower. So let's let's do this. Midtones are a little bit less intense because this image is uh, made up of a lot of highlights, a lot of shadows. Um, but I think adding that warm color grade is really nice. I think sometimes folks might look at this and think, oh, I need to add a cool color grade. So if you go the other way, it doesn't look necessarily bad, but it can be overpowering. Um, and as you add kind of cool tones into a very uh, warm image or someone who's warm skinned, it can sometimes look lifeless. So just something for you to be aware of and something for you to try. Like a lot of this is, is um, trial and error, but you have to remember that the color mix is about individually controlling a color. And the color grading is about setting the tone for colors across shadows, highlights, and midtones. And now that you know all that, I can show you this. You can just make one global edit if you want. I don't love this because I think it just lacks subtlety, but you can just go all the way over here. So this is to see all three. This is just to see one. And if you choose to see one, you can be more fine with your color choice. Shadows, midtones, or one that controls everything. Okay, make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, working space monitor calibration. Um, I don't do that because I'm lazy. <laughs> um, I, uh, I have an Apple XDR screen and I set it when I got it. I just went from there. I know a lot of folks like the BenQ monitors that have like the thing over it. Um, I'm just a very bougie human that likes that brushed metal from Apple. Um, but the BenQs are great. I would say that like, if you are editing on like a television, that can be tough, but your phones, um, your laptops, those screens are like kind of the colors, the care is a little bit different and more helpful. Um, so if you have a crappy screen, just sometimes check it on, your laptop or your phone before you export. I know I used to like plug my computer into a TV and then sometimes I'd see the edit later and be like, this looks different here. That can be um, helpful for you, to, for you to pay attention to. If you um, want to color calibrate, you can go to system preferences um, and do that. I see that it's not popping up because I have this full screen, so don't worry about it. Um, let's see, what colors go well together, Destiny? I mean, like I said, it really is a matter of preference, but the question I would ask your, you is like, what do you want the person to feel like when they see this, right? This photo to me feels very warm. So, but you saw that adding blue in, it doesn't actually look bad. Um, it's a question of like, I would start with what is the primary, like, is it a very dark image? Setting the tone and the shadows, setting the tone and the midtones and the highlights will then kind of, once you find it, it'll make sense. Um, and each time you edit, your kind of taste will change over time. Um, and if you once again spend more time on Pinterest, Instagram, and photo books, looking at images and asking yourself, like, not only about the action, but what are the colors in this image and what is it evoking in me? Um, I think that might be everything. Does anyone have any more questions or thoughts? Was this helpful to you? Um, if it was or was not, please tell Polly because she, um, how do I define bad coloring? It's like putting bad makeup on. Like, you know, that sometimes people do too much or they have the wrong foundation and you're like, that is not good for your skin. It's something that looks like it doesn't work with the image, right? Because sometimes what we'll do is like, right, let's take this photo of Greg. Um, Green doesn't actually look that bad in the midtones, but like let's 
we're starting to see like I think anything that's a too saturated for me. Um, B, this actually doesn't look that bad. Adding in that warmth in the shadows, this actually looks really nice. Shout out this photo of Greg just working for everything. But I would say like bad coloring is something that goes against what the spirit of the image is. And you know that best because you are the artist. Um, and so I would just ask you before, like when you start to play with your color grade, ask yourself, how do I want someone to feel when they come to this image? And then work backwards from there. Uh, because uh, you don't have to use all three color grade sliders. You can use one, you can use two, you can you could use all three, but you want it to go along with the mood. So if you want it to be warm, using warm tones. Um, if it looks super flat when it's warm, then starting to say, well, maybe I want my shadow, maybe the thing that's the least dominant in the image, I want that to be a little bit blue. Um, the science of it, in my opinion, is really just, this is the most subjective part of an edit. It's like, y'all know that you can take, you and someone else get the same photo and they can edit it through, they can color it and it looks incredible. Um, and part of that is just like starting to make color depth. But before we, like we can do a second class that's like more intention, but I wanted this one to start, not say that anything's wrong, but to show you how the tools can be used so that you can figure out how to express yourself and your subject matter through color better. And hopefully that was something that was achieved. And if it wasn't, I'm sorry. And I really thank all of you, like I had a lovely time. Um, oh, wow, sorry, there was something I was supposed to go to, but I didn't go. You are so cool. Funny. Thank you so much, Andre. Uh, everyone is saying thank you in the chat. We appreciate your time. This has been recorded. Oh, absolutely. Don't worry. Um, you can replay it, run it back. Uh, this is just um, very helpful. So thank you so much. Dude, homie, I appreciate it. Um, it's always a pleasure to be in the presence of all your hard work, Polly, and the fruits of labor, which is all you homies. Um, let me know if y'all need anything. Um, please, once again, if you want to find me on the internet, um, the links are there. Twitter is mostly nonsense. Instagram is sometimes nonsense and Discord is, and YouTube are more helpful. So feel free to find those if you can, but definitely spend some time with your old work, be patient with it. And if you come up with new questions, um, I'm sure Polly and I can find another session to do, but the other folks that are helping you are also very helpful. Go to many, as many of these as you can, but more importantly, like anything I tell you, this is about just knowing what the tools are. The practice of it will get you much further than anything that I say. Because then once you know, like, oh, I don't want to do that. Um, in the words, the, the best way I'd say this is, it's easier to say no when you've already said yes. So when you start to settle in to what you believe your vision is, um, it'll be easier to know what to avoid. And then that can change over time. Perfect way to end this. Thank you again. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Have a great rest of your evenings. Bye everyone. Bye everybody.